This is an intro. Intro, intro, intro. Hustle and Float Shark with your boy, my boy, Matt Wolf and Joe Fit. Hey. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Hustle and Flow Chart podcast. My name is Matt Wolf, and I am here with my beautiful co host ah! and his pink microphone. It's cute. Joe Fear. Hashtag pink mic. Not, the, the hashtag is not going to catch on, it's Joe. It's catching on. Give I, it up. <laughs> I checked Twitter. It's, oh, yeah? it's blowing up. Not How many really. people have used it? Me. Okay. So he's my uh, wife personally <laughs> using the hashtag pink microphone. Or is it pink mic? Pink Mike. Pink Mike. I don't know. Whatever you want. <laughs> I'm going to get Kurt to like create some uh, cool campaign around this thing. Wait, to what end? I, no end. I don't oh know. Oh my God. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> hey, Kurt commented that he likes my pink mic. I'm, sure I'm sure he likes your pinky. <laughs> um, all right. So today, we already alluded, we're talking to Kurt Molly. Mm. Kurt Molly, uh, when I was back um, running Learn to Blog with my partner Bradley Will at the time, Kurt was our Facebook ads guy. And I actually talk about it on the, on the episode, but he basically helped us scale the hell out of our business through Facebook ads. Like, quick and he's pretty much been like my facebook guru ever since um he has a a, an interesting story he actually got booted off of facebook for almost two and a half years Mm -hmm. but uh they they finally let him back in and uh he's going to tell you that story but we are going to dive so deep on some ninja facebook ad stuff this is going to be one of those episodes where you're probably going to need to listen to three or four times because he drops some amazing stuff i mean joe and i were literally Mm -hmm. sitting here like taking notes going holy crap this is gold we need to go do this right now yeah um you know strategies to grow podcasts strategies if you want to be a filmmaker how to get reach with the filmmaking how Uh, to be how to basically create these audiences within facebook that you can do these ninja little tactics and show them very specific kind of content that's going to really uh that's not expensive for one he's uh big on just dollar day strategies two dollar day like penny clicks and engagements but there's stuff he gives you actionable plans on how to actually put specific content in front of these folks so they're taking action buying your stuff and doing whatever else you want them to do yeah i mean uh the, it's a wide ranging conversation around facebook ads we go all over the place and just get all sorts of tactics and strategies and we're actually going to do a follow-up round too mm-hmm. because we even have more places we want to go with kurt um but one thing that uh that if, if you want a little cheat sheet cliff note version of this episode, if you go to evergreenprofits.com, uh, search for the Kurt Molly episode. It may be on the front page, depending on when you're listening to this. And uh, go into the show notes, and we have a little link where you can actually get the cheat sheet version of our episodes. A little kind of follow-along companion guide with with notes about what we talked about to, to help lock in some of this stuff. So make sure you go to evergreenprofits.com and uh, grab the cheat sheet. And if you haven't already, we would really appreciate a subscription on iTunes. So if you haven't already, subscribe Subscribe. on iTunes. That is the like the biggest thank you you can do for us if you're if you're enjoying this stuff. Subscribe. So that's really really annoying. Okay. (laughs) Joe's just (laughs) chanting subscribe. So you should subscribe. (laughs) Go to evergreenprofits.com. Get the cheat sheet. Go subscribe to us on iTunes at hustleandflowchart.com. And uh, you rock. And let's just go talk to Kurt. No, Uh, it's a good good one. What's up, Kurt? Thanks for joining us. How you doing? Hey, amazing. <laughs> How are you? Good, good. So I have a question. Is your last name pronounced Kurt Molly or Kurt Malley? I think I've known you for about eight or nine, seven or eight, nine, I don't know, some, a lot of years now, and I've never known the answer to that question, so important question. That is. Molly, like M-O-L-L-Y. Molly. Okay, Kurt Molly, good. Yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll stop calling you Kurt Molly. Before I go on the stage, and they're like, Malley, and they're like, why don't you ever correct people? And I'm like, the check cash is the same, it doesn't really matter. Sorry. That's like me with fear and fire. Same thing. I'm like, whatever. Roll with it. You know, own it. Yeah, everybody seems to call him Joe Fire, but Matt Wolfie. Yeah, we're all good here. You know what is random? When I was in elementary school, my like even my teachers would call me Matt Wolfie. I'm like, do you really think that E is pronounced like a Y? Like, who does that? Okay. Anyway, random rants. Name so, uh, <laughs> so you and I, I, how far back do we go? We probably go back, what, seven or eight years or so? Seven or eight years. I was trying to think where we originally met. I know we worked together seven well, years ago. We met through Bradley, my old uh, business partner at Learn to Blog. Bradley Will. Bradley That's Will. That's right. Because I remember yeah. working with you. I'm just trying to think. I'm like, where did we actually meet at? But that's right. Yep. Yeah. And we're so, running Learn to Blog. Yeah. So I think you and Bradley went back a ways from previous 
industries or real estate or yeah. something. I don't remember exactly what it was. Network but. marketing slash real estate slash opportunity slash we're going to make a whole bunch of money in an economy that's going like that. Yeah. It was uh, <laughs> good times. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, we worked together at learn to blog. You, we were the guy that ran all of our ads for us. And I think, um, I think before we started working with you, we were probably running about a thousand to two thousand dollars a month in advertising. And then like within six weeks of working with you, we were running about thirty thousand dollars a month in advertising. Because <laughs> the shit was just working. With you and I'm like, right, how are we going to talk into Matt and spend more money? And Matt's like, ah, how are we going to do this? And I'm like, okay, I know we're going to talk him into doing this, but hang on a second. Uh -huh. <laughs> He's a hard nut to crack sometime, Matt. I mean, he needs to have all this proved. Yeah, but I'm stubborn as shit. <laughs> uh huh. It's fun. <laughs> That's a cool little story, man. I mean, so for the listeners, who the hell are you? What's your? Uh, you don't have to go into the crazy details, but um, yeah, what are you doing, man? Yeah, how'd you? How yeah. did you uh, get into the advertising world? It's a great question. My name is Kurt Molly. I live in the beautiful city of Austin, Texas. As you gentlemen know, it's a place that overlooks the city. One of my favorite. I like to call the layer in the sky. Um, I've been in this business 10 plus years. Essentially what happened is where I met your old business partner was is, uh, is an old network marketing company. And I basically got out of corporate America 2007, told everybody, 2006, 2007, told everybody, hey, I'm going to get into real estate investing. I jump into real estate investing because like, I don't know what I'm doing. And then I pull out $40,000 $40, in home equity. I pull that out. And now it's the first time as an entrepreneur, I just had a whole bunch of money, which I didn't really know what I was doing. <laughs> and if you notice, the theme is, is like basically get into the NFL club, which I didn't have any funds left. I had no friends left. And I wasn't having any fun left. Like I all <laughs> suck. So uh, about 2007, I started advertising for small businesses just locally. And one thing happens to another. I meet a guy by the name of Mike Dillard. He he wants to have coffee for some strange reason. Mm -hmm. We end up having coffee. He said he says he'll help us create one of our first online products. Very quickly, all of a sudden, he I, he asked me to run his Facebook ads for people who don't know who Mike is. He's somebody who had made thirty five million at this point online. Mm -hmm. And uh, now I go to this place called the Internet Marketing Party here in Austin, Texas. And I tell people, I run Mike Dillard's ads. Why don't I run yours? Well, now let's fast forward. We're here 10 years later. Um, and essentially, we're with celebrities who, who, uh, who's who. Um, just kind of real quick on this. This is, uh, uh, sorry, I just had a quick alert. The sneeze. <laughs> Man, Tony and Spurs, uh, uh, reality TV stars. Uh, we help a lot of people become New York Times bestselling authors. Uh, what I really like to do is people can sell anything on Facebook. I really specialize in Facebook, do a little bit of Google, specialize a lot of stuff in uh, video. Um, but you can sell hand cream or whatever you want. I'm really passionate in stuff that will change the world that we can actually monetize as well, right? Like we can make money in a way that we want to. So I'm really passionate about like helping teachers, best uh, best selling authors who really give people information that can really help change their life and hear the stories. That's what our ad agency focuses on now. So. I have an ad agency, digital training products. I speak on stage, and I love doing this stuff. Awesome. Yeah. Now, I don't. I don't know if you want to talk about this. So, I mean, we could edit it sure. out if you don't. Anything. Um, yes. Love it. So, yes. at you one point, you kind of got kicked off of Facebook. Do you want to tell that story and how you how how that came around? Absolutely. Yes. So, what happens is, is I mean, this is what happens when you're being a trailblazer, right? Somebody has to set the rules. That's the way I look at it. Anyway. Yeah. Um, what ends up happening is, is in 2000, 2014, so this would be in November 2014, mm -hmm. um, uh, yeah, November 2014, I had over 20 ad accounts for clients that were shut down. So at that time, you could spend millions of dollars because you were a client at the time. Mm -hmm. You could spend millions of dollars a month with Facebook and no one would ever call you. There's no customer service. Mm -hmm. And if something happens, you have to take a wild guess what happens. Yep. Well, when you have someone like you were all paying us four or five thousand dollars a month for us to run your ads, you're paying us money. Your ads are shut off. I have no customer service. I have clients like Russell Brunson, Lead Pages, Evan Pagan. I have all these amazing clients, and I'm like, no, no, no. These are products that are not hype, but literally products that can help change the world. They're really good people doing really good things. Mm -hmm. Facebook, I'm looking for some help and support. Mm -hmm. Well, down that path, one of my employees introduced me to an employee at Facebook. Over the next three months, that Facebook rep started to help us answer some of our customer service questions. And then by the time that she left Facebook, Facebook said that 
Um, she gave us proprietary confidential information. They didn't like the relationship. And for over 888 days, I was off of Facebook personally. I wasn't allowed to have employees that would touch Facebook. I wasn't allowed to have third party tools. Wow. I sat on the sidelines, coached and consulted. And uh, back in October of 2017, I got the blessing back from Facebook, signed a legal letter that basically said, uh, I am whitelisted. Kurt, please play nice. And uh, <laughs> I am here today. So basically, so, wow. so you had some information from an ad rep and you were kind of out there sharing the information from the ad rep and then later found out like, oh shit, I wasn't supposed to be sharing that information. Well, sir, this was very early on before they really had ad reps. So the thing is that's interesting is, is what will happen is, is basically this, is Facebook will select who they want to work with. This isn't like you're, you're buying a bunch of cars, so you have the district manager that you, they decide on who they want to work with. So customer service decides who they want to reply to. So if you're running a business where Matt is writing me a check every month so I can play my employees, someone waiting to follow up on an answer like just doesn't really help. Hmm. The employee that I met was actually in compliance. So it wasn't an ad rep. She helped me find someone who was an ad rep. They didn't return my phone calls. Customer service didn't return my emails. And this person said, these other avenues, I don't know why aren't working. You're asking all the right questions. I will help you. And I said very clearly, and I'm happy to go and record and say this because I said this over and over. I told her, look, I know people in this industry that fly out their reps to Vegas with cocaine and prostitutes. And I am not looking to have that relationship. I have great <laughs> people in the world that they have some questions. I'm not asking you to break any rules. I don't want you to do anything different. If you can point me in the right direction, that's fine. I just want... I, I want help for these guys who do this blogging thing, who teach stay-at-home moms how to blog, and it gives them an income source. It's not a work-at-home project. That's it. So all I want to do is help people. Mm -hmm. And that's essentially what she did. So, so it wasn't that I was sharing information that was internal. Facebook didn't like the relationship with her because she had an internal problem already with Facebook. I'm just kind of a bystander, and all of a sudden, I'm a guy speaking on stage who's been completely wiped off of Facebook. And it's not because this big conspiracy, because I was giving people the code of the Facebooks. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You guys now know as much as I do. So whatever she traded with us, it's not that I made more money. It's not that I did something black hat, but I will say this one last quick thing. I was judged for two and a half years because of the way, because there's no case precedent, nothing. Right. They own the island it is a hundred percent up to them. So when the lawyers started to do investigations on me to find out more about me and they researched me, they found my program, my digital program, Social Media Ad Genius, uh -huh. on black hat sites, meaning someone took my program, as you guys already know, Matt knows this, took my program, stole it, and was selling access to it. But when Facebook ran a Google search, Facebook says, oh, you're selling black hat services on these black hat sites, <laughs> so this is have you banned. And I'm like... I just want like a lawyer. No, lawyer doesn't even help. I just want. So the only thing that I could do is write the Facebook lawyer every 10 days an emotional letter to appeal to them as a human. And after two and a half years, I think they're finally like, bye. <laughs> bye. bye. Just stop freaking writing us. <laughs> We're over it. <laughs> Dang. Man. That's a hell of a story. And what do you do on the sidelines? Like, were you just teaching strategy to clients privately or? What were you doing there? By the way, if you haven't really realized this from hanging out with me a little bit, love telling stories. <laughs> I do. Right? By the way, you're you're fucking fun to hang out with. By the way, in Austin, like that was the best perfect like the best night we could think of just riding scooters around Austin, eating barbecue and just having a good old time. But telling stories was part of it. It's just fascinating. Yeah, so just, so just to lay the land a little bit, like this is I love this business because what I love to be able to do is connect with people like yourself. I told I told you the story a little bit, I'll tell you this, then I'll go back to the Facebook thing. <laughs> is one of the things that I love to do is I love the city of Austin because it gave me the opportunity we are talking about right here because the people that I've met. I'm really fortunate because the place I get to live where you guys have seen overlooks the city. So I get to talk to smart people like these amazing entrepreneurs to come and have a great conversation out there. And then maybe we'll ride some scooters to get some barbecue. But it's an amazing view around here. And we just hang out. But it's just the three of us. There's not 50 people around. Right. So, for example, it was it was you all, and then um, uh, two nights ago, it was Molly Pittman, the other person, uh, Lindsay, who's putting on the conference for Many Chat. 
a director of seven different documentaries. Last night was that same director, his business partner, a client of mine I worked with two years ago, Molly Pittman and her other business partner. Like, I love to entertain smart people up here. So yeah, man, yeah. you're doing it good. Doing yeah, it right. that, that was uh, the best. That was the best day of the entire trip of Austin. Was just hanging out with you, scootering, getting true. some barbecue, and doing some other stuff back at your apartment that we won't get into right now. Um, but you know, it was a good day. <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> we love it. Just bribing. <laughs> That's all you're doing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Got to scooch just a little bit. Hey, man. So, um, uh, so at the end of the day, the question goes back to sidelines. Right. So what's interesting is we're sitting here and we're, uh, we hire lawyers. We basically deplete our bank account, uh, $40,000, whatever, cash, that's all we have left. And we basically realize that, look, the lawyers are trying to fight against something that doesn't have any case precedent. <sighs> Let's just get rid of our lawyers. But basically, before we do that, just say this. We'll just work with Facebook. I'm going to sell my business. Lawyers are like, great. And I'm like, I'm going to sell my business and I'll just sit by the sidelines and help people consult, but I won't do any of the rules that Facebook give me. I'm going to hundred percent follow them. I will not dial in with a VPN. I will not blah, blah. <laughs> Don't want to play that game. I've always wanted to do the right thing. So I will stand on the sidelines and do this. And they go, great. Who are you selling your business to? And I go, Molly marketing. And they go, you can't do that. And I go, my brother's had an ad agency for the last 13 years. I'm just going to teach him my principles. So I go out, meet smart people like yourself. They want to do business with us. I say, great. I take them through the onboarding process, consult them, hand them over to my brother. He has 14 employees. He follows all the rules. He has a Facebook rep. Facebook loves him. <laughs> and the lawyers do what you guys just did. They're like, uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, all right. <laughs> Don't see anything I guess wrong there. So, yeah, I would go to events. Now, all of a sudden, this is the amazing part of the story, in my personal opinion, is what ends up happening is when Facebook sues me, I get this fancy apartment that I live in now. I leave a 10 year relationship. I don't know what I'm going to do. I think I'm going to get kicked out. And this is an entrepreneur by surrounding myself with great entrepreneurs. I love coming on podcasts and listen to podcasts like this because other entrepreneurs have the same story. So I surrounded myself with a bunch of other entrepreneurs. One person who had been sued by Oprah figured I was been sued by wow. Zuck. This was great. <laughs> and it was really that mindset shift by surrounding myself with some really great people. Within two weeks, they sold $35,000 of consulting. And my life really changed where I got to sit on the sidelines. Now I don't have employees, which I found out I really like that fact. <laughs> my brother has all the employees and it's really the best situation. So he runs all that. And it's really one of the best, one of the best That's things cool. that could happen to us. I love working with my brother. So how cool is that? Is he out in Austin with you when, as well? Uh, no, he's in Nebraska. Oh, so he has right. he has a couple of kids in Nebraska. That's where my parents. That's where my mom lives. And he just likes uh, doing tourism in Nebraska. Does a bunch of uh, other really unique government clients. And hangs out with his kids, and we just work remote. Perfect, yeah. man. so cool. That's awesome. Well, let's well, talk yeah. about some uh, some Facebook ad strategy type stuff because. Um, Oh, we, please don't ask me any about math and facts because I am horrible at this stuff. But go we ahead. Could, we could probably we could probably dance around the math and facts a little That's bit. That's okay. Uh, <laughs> My favorite subject, by the way. Favorite subject. <laughs> but no, when we were in Austin and and hanging out, you know, we just we covered so much ground, and um, unfortunately, a lot of the ground we covered uh, didn't totally stick so we're gonna recover some ground that we covered in austin <laughs> literally that night when we came back back to our hotel room i think we just passed out but we're, next day we're like oh shit what did kurt say <laughs> we're like let's let's just jot down as fast as we could remember by the way i love this stuff I'll, at different large industry events i'll have like vip parties not where i spend tons of money but i but you guys have been there where yeah. I invite just a really great group of people and spend a little bit on liquor. But my favorite thing is, is I'll have a drink in my hand all night long, but I'm not getting drunk. Right. I'll have conversations at four o'clock in the morning and I love this. So I'll memorize the whole thing. And people are like, I know you've been drinking all night. And I'm like, no, dude, I've been waiting all night long for this conversation. That's I remember, right. I'm happy. So whatever you guys would like to ask me, I'm happy to repeat what we went over. <laughs> Perfect. All right. So where should we start, Joe? Well, we have, I mean, oh. we're looking, you, you, uh, we don't normally do videos. So you're seeing us look over here. That's because we got a whiteboard here with like, all Tons right. of topics to cover. If, if we Here, get here's to them something that's pretty cool. We're talking about mini chat already with Molly Pittman. She's going to be on the show in the yeah. future here pretty soon here. We've been chatting. You have yeah, probably sure. the coolest mini chat sequence uh, for for your social media, you know, the, the 2.0 that you have out there. And it's absolutely amazing. I guess. Well, what, let's talk about what mini chat is first uh, yeah. and then maybe talk about the sequence a little bit. Let's do that. Yeah, happy to. So for the people listening about internet marketing, what we're really referring to is um, Facebook Messenger. 
So Facebook Messenger itself uh, can be really powerful. Lots of people like to use it, especially on their cell phones. And the age usage is all across 18 year olds to 75 year olds are all using Messenger in their thumbs because they're on a phone. Mm-hmm. Now, essentially, what many chat is, or I like Manny, M-A-N-Y, many, many chat. I'll call it Manny for whatever stupid Manny reason. <laughs> um, but many chat is essentially developed by some people out of Russia that automates the process, kind of like an AWeber for email. Um, that's what ManyChat does for uh, Facebook Messenger. Hmm. In my personal opinion, I know people who have invested in the company and work in the company. I've met the owners. I've met some of the developers. I believe ManyChat will be like the next Xerox for Facebook for automating Messenger service. There's lots of other platforms out there that are bots or Messenger bots, but I believe that ManyChat will be the Xerox. Hmm. Now, what happens is, is at the end of the day, which I know that people love, we talked about this earlier, mm-hmm. is at the end of the day is they like to buy stuff. People like to be educated a little bit. Uh, if they're really interested, they're reading a large, long blog content, which I write like at a fifth grade level anyway. Um, but at the end of the day, people really like to be entertained. And this is exactly why we do what I do. And we're going, through, right? We're going through this entire process. And what we realize is at the end of the day, people like to be entertained. So what happens is, is many times people want to be entertained, but they also want really quick, easy answers. So what happens is is you can go to a website, for example, and look at the home button, the shop button. It's all designed differently. People have in different locations to make it eat, whatever. But what Messenger has really started to be is just like text messaging. I don't know about you all, but I am talking a lot less on the phone and I am texting friends. For sure. Now, if you automate that process, hey... I noticed that you listened to our last podcast. I, I noticed that you visited our site. Would you, you like to be updated each time our podcast comes out? This was the conversation yeah. that Joe and I were trying to freaking remember. You literally <laughs> just reminded me of what we talked about. <laughs> Joe and I just looked at each other. We had like this breakthrough of like, this was the conversation that we forgot. That's awesome. RSS feed. Yeah. That conversation was early in the night before it even sunset. That, yeah, that is true. See, you remember way yeah. better than you're like an elephant. So, you just like have a great. So for, ex- so for example, <laughs> and we can go through this whole structure of it, but uh, from a twenty thousand foot view, and then I'll kind of dive back in the messer. From a twenty thousand foot view, that there's there's three different parts of your funnel, right? You have a top of funnel, which I know that people can't see this when I'm watching the video, so I'll just describe it. You have a top of funnel at the very top, which is people who have never, ever, ever met you for the very first time, never heard of me. These guys, very first time you're seeing us. Middle of funnel is, hey, I've seen their stuff before. Mm-hmm. Maybe I haven't bought, maybe I have, but I've seen their stuff before. And bottom of funnel is, hey, I'm really interested in buying, but I, I just need a little bit more convincing, right? It's a very, very bottom of funnel. They've gone on the, the sales page, the very bottom of funnel. Mm-hmm. Well, what happens with stuff like Messenger is if someone goes to your website, well, you can run an ad to them that says, hey, would you like to be notified the next time that we release our next podcast, you can be notified directly via messenger. So uh, uh, the next time that we release our podcast, they click on a button that says send message. It pops up a little message for them. This can be typically on a mobile experience with mobile or desktop message pops up. And then you're just going to ask permission. Hey, it looks like you're looking to receive notifications about each time we release a podcast. Would you like to proceed? Yes or no. You can stop at any time. Yes. Now you got permission. Great. Great. Once you hit the next button, you'll be connected. What I would just do because people like to be entertained and they're looking at a robot and they all know this, by the way, right? We're not disguising anything. We're not faking people out. Mm -hmm. But it is, hey, let me fetch that magical link for me. Now, or let me fetch that magical link for you. Once you click the magic button below, each time we come out with a new podcast, you'll be notified via your phone. You can stop at any time just by replying stop. They hit the button. Now that notification is going to go out. You set up an RSS feed. That notification is going to go out, alert to someone's phone, and they can stop at any time. But the deliverability, because we are talking about this, mm-hmm. is nearly 100%, yes. and someone has to ignore it like I am about ready to ignore all the different messages that I have on my phone, right? <laughs> but this is going to get pushed a lot better than it does for your email. So at right. the end of the day, bots can help automate that entire process. Love it. And that's that, I think, just alone, I mean, for podcasting, that's something that we will be doing. 
and it, we do mini chat probably at the most minute level. We have some, I think it's like two messages that are automated. So there's a lot to be done, but just with those messages alone and using some live chat, it's been the biggest aha in our business. And it's just such a cool way to engage with folks on a deeper level that you would never be able to do before. So yeah, good well, for stuff. what you guys are doing now, I would be running videos and messenger. One of my favorite things to do is inside of messenger, the content you deliver a minute video, a two minute video, but especially for you guys, you can send, you know, a direct audio. Mm -hmm. So yeah. having a, you know, a three minute clip come out, Hey, here's our re recent clip of interview that we just did with Kurt and your voices are constantly in their ears. And they can listen to the preview and then go to the next episode. Like I'd be, I'd be playing with this thing all day long. Yeah, yeah man, we will. And that's, uh, yeah, I don't know. There's just so many things and mini chat. Yeah. If you haven't listeners, if you haven't messed around with it, there's probably integrations that, I mean, new things are every day. So you can get as creative as you want, but just using a simple structure, like Kurt said, I know on their website, they teach you a ton of stuff too. So yeah. get in on it. It's good stuff. Um, there's a, uh, let's see. So we talked about mini chat. I think that's really good. How about messenger ads? Well, well, I, hold on. I want to stick or, on mini chat for just a second. Okay. So with mini chat, um, how, how do you recommend getting people onto our mini chat list? You know, like ah, it, it, cause it, right now, you know, we've got, mm -hmm. I think our mini chat list is hovering right around a thousand subscribers right now as of this recording. So we can obviously, I mean, we have some low hanging fruit. We can broadcast that list and say, do you want to subscribe to our podcast? Get on our ISS, do that whole thing with that existing list. But new people how do i get new people into that list what would you recommend so great question mm -hmm. so to be clear from what i've heard you say and what i remember from our conversations is you will take snippets of video snippets and you'll run those as ads kind of for a dollar a day is that yeah. right mm -hmm. and you run that top of funnel or mid funnel uh that one is would be i guess mid funnel that's where it's retargeting so it's people who've engaged with, it's a 30-day engagement audience Essentially, okay, so essentially like the hot 30, you know, we'll get into the hot X, you know, hot seven, hot okay. 15, hot 30. So you have ads that are running, that are bringing cold people in, right? Like you, like you take one of our, one of the interviews and you target different audiences. Yep. Mm -hmm. Right. Yep. Doing that. So that's cool. And then what happens is then people come into the warm, right? That I know that you're retargeting for 30 days. So what I would personally do is a couple of different things. Mm -hmm. One, um, a video that's under a minute. So I do a video that's under a minute. Mm -hmm. And what you do for a video that's under a minute, you basically describe the experience. So it is, hey, if you've been checking, hey, hey everybody, if you've been checking out any of our content, we have a unique, fun way inside of Messenger where you can get notified each time one of our uh, podcast notifications comes out. And by the way, you can stop this at any time, but it's really fun and easy. All you're going to do is you're going to click on that button down below that hits send message, and it's going to pop up and it's going to ask you permission to say, hey, do you want to, do you want this to be accepted? Yeah. Or uh, do you want to receive notifications and updates? You're going to say yes. And by the way, it's just going to be for the podcast. I'm not going to send you any other junk. But again, you're just going to go ahead and click that send message. This little box is going to pop up and it's going to say, hey, would you like our podcast? You're going to go ahead and click yes. Or you can click no, but I wouldn't do that. You can go ahead and click yes. Once you click yes, it's just going to say, hey, are you sure you want the notifications? You're going to click yes. And each time a new podcast comes out, you're going to be automatically notified right here on your fancy phone. Um, and inside of Messenger. By the way, you can go ahead and stop at any time. So I would run a video like that. And what I would also do is I would take that video in a second campaign. Mm -hmm. And in that second campaign, I would run a carousel ad that has that video that's one minute, has to be one minute or less. Mm -hmm. But you run that in a carousel ad and the carousel ad itself, all the other pictures, they're all other past episodes. So you make uh, sure the text yeah. isn't too big. Right, but it's like episode one with blah blah blah, whoever that was. I mean, it's a bigger picture of their face, but mm -hmm. little text. And then don't allow Facebook to optimize for the the kind of pictures because you can say optimize for carousel or just let it run. So yeah. your video would be first, then the other podcast would be right there. And anytime they click that send message, it would go into the sequence that I just messaged. That makes sense. Yeah, that's cool. So you're showing all those other pictures just to kind of show like, hey, you have FOMO. access to all this stuff. Yeah, FOMO, and that's, social proof, all that. And, that's, and you're saying that's a middle of the funnel sort of concept. So you're, you're kind of retargeting people with that video, the first video? Absolutely, nice. absolutely. Mm -hmm. Because I would put that, and what we'll talk about here in a minute, is in my middle of funnel hot setup. You know, what a lot of people do is, we'll kind of start the topic because it's interesting, is uh, what a lot of people do is they're like, all right, you know, I've talked about this a lot. I'm going to turn on a bunch of ads top of funnel, hold people. 
Mm-hmm. Now, if I don't see cold people opt in or buy right away, I'm going to stop, start, stop, start, stop. But then what people will do, as many people listening, is they'll get email opt-ins and then they'll follow up to seven days. And if they don't buy, they stop following up. So they're starting and stopping ads and you don't follow up after seven days. A lot of people in the Facebook land leave this middle of funnel pretty much just pretty much a dead space. So yeah, we're gonna be talking about a lot of content to fill that dead space. So while you're like a lot of entrepreneurs, which tell me if I'm right or wrong, you have a good podcast that comes up, you can get some people interested in that. A lot of people start to love and like you, like I like you guys more than I get to know you. That works out great, but you might not have that perfect funnel that converts as soon as someone sees you, as soon as someone buys. It may take three or four times. And seeing three or four times shouldn't have to cost you a ton of money if you do it right. It should be they just see more and more content, just like a follow-up email process. And whenever someone's ready, they're ready to buy at a very low cost. Mm. And see, that's what I love about this whole conversation. And when we're in Austin is there's so many ways you can just leverage the platform of Facebook and all the different ad types and and targeting. It's just like follow-up sequences and email or wherever else you're at, but it's all harnessed inside of here. And with your method, you know, all, all the different things you're doing, we could chat about that, but you know, things like movie documentaries, directors, like you're saying here, like that's a totally different ball game. We'll get into that later after we talk uh-huh. about some methods. So I have one comment, if you don't mind. Uh, so but, there's what most people screw up on their ads. And I say this not as a marketing cliche, but people are like, oh yeah, we do that. <laughs> what they'll do is they'll start, I'm just gonna make up some numbers, but it's pretty close to this. This is the math and facts. They'll start up five different audiences to target. And they're like, I got these five different lookalike audiences. Cool. You got five different lookalike audiences, but you got to test five different ads because you got to test them, you know, five different. So, so, so maybe you test five different ad sets. Mm-hmm. So you have these five different audiences with these five different ad sets, which is 25 different types of ad combinations, whatever. Cool. It's fine. Maybe you did a parasol ad or a video ad or whatever. Fine. Whatever. And then what happens is people look at all this data and they're like, all right, did we get leads or did we get sales? It's all top of funnel. And they'll say, oh my goodness, some of these we got sales, some of these we did not. And they start turning off a bunch of these ads. And what happens is, is you typically are going to run with your best 10% or 15% of your ads. You're going to have to trim 90 to 85% fat. Mm-hmm. Where people really screw up these days is they're like, oh yeah, let me start this top of funnel and figure all this stuff out. But I'm also gonna set up retargeting. And they retarget all this fat. So just to be direct, it's like a pig who rolls around in its own shit and then rolls around your site and then you retarget all of the shit that you cut and you're like, I don't understand why my retargeting doesn't work, my funnel doesn't work. Your top of funnel should be less than break even or break even. Your middle of funnel will make you all of your money but most people are starting and stopping and they're rolling around in pig shit. And what I'm asking you all to do, which you're really close to doing, which is run good content top of funnel and middle of funnel. They're just going to see really great content and they can buy wherever they want to. And you're only retargeting people who are interested. You're not targeting people who are a split test. So let me ask mm-hmm. you this then. How do you know which top of funnel ads are, are being effective to build your audiences in the middle of the funnel? Man. That is a great question. If you <laughs> did that question backwards, you would have your answer. I will tell you that is one of the biggest uh, pains in the butt for us running our own advertising is we have a lot of cold traffic ads, um, you know, and they're going to podcast episodes like this one. They're going to content we've got on our blog. And then what we're doing is we're retargeting those people, um, middle of the funnel, hot seven ads. We'll get into that kind of stuff, but retargeting a lot of those people to, you know, offers and, and other stuff. But we never really know which of these top of the funnel ads are the most effective at building these middle of the funnel retargeting campaigns. All right, I'm going to pull up, I'm going to pull up Barry Belcher, Perry Belcher. All right, let's do it. Love it. He, I'll never forget. He told me this directly. This isn't something I heard from the back of the room. This is one of these conversations in his office, but it's like, I'm going to tell you what to do, right? The only thing I'm going to ask is that you're going to implement it. And then when you implement this very, very simple process, you're going to record the results. And if it does what I think it's going to do, you will give me credit for it. And then he says, you're going to pay me a bunch of money, but you're just going to give credit for it and then brag <laughs> about it consistently that, oh my goodness, this guy named Kurt Molly helped <laughs> us really well. And, oh my God, you should go find out more of his stuff and then just give him money. Love it. Deal. Okay. 
So the first thing that I would do, because you are brilliant individuals, is your top of funnel is going to be pretty easy to do, but this is why we record it and we talk fast. I'll give you the step-by-step -step of what to do. While you're interviewing your guest in a pre-interview, just like we did, I would ask them or post-interview, hey, look, I'm going to go ahead and run this in my top of funnel. So I'm really curious, Kurt, you have your own brand. Who's your perfect audience that you like to target top of funnel? Or would you be willing to share any of your lookalike audiences with us or like your email audience, because you can't steal the audience, but you can run your ad to that audience. And if you want to spend your money to advertise to my email list, you don't get access to my list. I'm just sharing the audience. You can't create a lookalike. Mm. Okay. Why not? It only helps you, right? Yeah. So what happens is this. I'd ask your guest, who do you target for your personal, they have a personal brand for your personal brand? Because I'm going to run this top of funnel as well too. Oh, and by the way, if you have any warm audiences that you would be open to share, I'd run that as well. Mm, now, that. now what's gonna happen is, is you can run that like a video like this. What I would personally do is I would take a four or five minute snippet. Mm. Some people like to do a minute. I mean, you guys have a great podcast, so maybe you take a minute. I like to do a, bit, a little bit longer. That's just me, but you guys are entertaining. So let's just, I don't know, let's just, uh, so by the way, the reason I say a minute is because that will run on, uh, that will run on Instagram. Uh -huh. Anything over a minute will only run on Facebook. But what I look at is this top of funnel. If I'm running a four minute video and it cost me 20 cents to have someone watch 75%, it just cost me 20 cents to spend three minutes with me. Hmm. That's great. Right. If I can get him to listen to your podcast for three minutes, if I can get him to watch us for three minutes for 20 cents, you don't need a lead or a website click or any of that. That's it. Mm -hmm. So you can literally run that top of funnel three to five dollars a day. And what I look for is I don't care about the clicks because I'm optimizing for website views, a website or a video view. A website mm -hmm. click could be a dollar, but a video view could be three minutes instead of a website click that's 15 seconds. Mm hmm. Can literally run this for three to five dollars a day like i would test through i test three different top of funnels where it's like hey client you want to share or hey uh, interviewer uh, interviewee you want to share two of your audiences great and then i would test a lookalike audience and then maybe a cold audience that i would suggest your interviewee suggest so testing four audiences and you can start these at three dollars a day it's it it's just three bucks hmm. and what happens is if someone watches 25 percent or 50 or 75 or 95, they're gonna roll into this next middle of funnel that we're gonna talk about the hot seven. So you're not retargeting people who just watch for 10 seconds. You're retargeting people who watch. This is why I like doing videos that are three or four minutes, not just a minute. Mm -hmm. So you can easily see literally spend $3 a day after four days, wow, I spent uh, 12 bucks, people didn't really watch, 12 bucks, people didn't watch. Wow, I noticed that people are watching for 50 cents, they're watching the entire video. I'm just gonna let these run for $3 a day and then it's gonna cascade down to these exact same videos, exact same ones are running for a dollar a day mid funnel. So once these people watch, mm -hmm. and I'd like to talk about this technology in a minute if you don't mind, but once people watch, now all of a sudden they see it over and over, but they're not seeing like a regular retargeting ad, buy now, buy now, buy now. They're like, oh man, they're interviewing Russell Brunson. Did they just interview so and so? Did they just, man, what are they doing? And these are all five cents, 10 cents, 15 cents, 20 cents, a lot cheaper. Mm. And by the way, we're doing one thing that we're doing right now mm. this 10,000 year old technique. People will literally pay, we'll get into movies in a minute. People will actually sit on their phone and watch a 90 minute video. They would watch this entire presentation for many of my clients less than $2. So my question is is it better to get an email for two bucks? or have someone watch one of your 90 minute podcast completely to the end for two bucks. The latter. <laughs> uh, it's the short consumption, right? Because we can oh, build yeah. a relationship with what we're doing right now. It's so cool and that that should be a mind shift. It was for us, for me at least, and, and the listeners, if you didn't grasp that, just rewind a little bit <laughs> and re-listen because it's worth it. So that's top of funnel, right? Just you, you lightly test out top of funnel, then I like testing out lookalike audiences of like 95% video views of my best video, for example, right? Mm -hmm. People who consume the entire thing. Now your middle of funnel is essentially the way the technology works is this. I'm gonna explain this in two quick parts and I'll be really quick, I promise. The middle of funnel basically works like this. You look to stack 
10, 15, 20 different pieces of content that targets what I like to call the hot seven. It's every mm -hmm. conceivable way that you can retarget someone. And some people like to set it up for 30 days. You've set it up for 30 days, which is absolutely great. All we're doing is talking about, hey, anybody who watches these videos, these cold videos, or if they go to my website, or if they like my page, or if they go to my uh, fan page, or if they engage with the page, there's all, every conceivable yeah. way to retarget. We have set by step to do that. What happens is, is basically when someone lands on your website, they're caught like in the spider web. So what happens is you run 15 to 20 posts for a dollar a day to the saved audience of any conceivable way that someone has connected with you in the last 30 days. So what happens is, is all these different podcasts that you have that are four minutes or an eight minute segment, heck, it can be the full thing if you're just lazy and want to edit it. <laughs> right. And you run them for a dollar a day. What ends up happening is people watch the interview with you and I top of funnel. It doesn't matter if they click. It doesn't matter if they opt in. It just matters if they watch just 25%. So it's just a minute. That's how we qualify top of funnel. So it doesn't screw up our retargeting. They spill over to middle of funnel now it's like they're reading through our Apple playlist and every couple of days, and I'll tell you why this happens, they're going to see another video, but they're not going to see the same one twice. By the way, we set this up. Mm -hmm. The Facebook algorithm will actually, this is three years old. Zuckerberg posted this on his personal page. The Facebook algorithm will actually look at the video. Like it would look at our video right now and know that there are three men in the video, two with beards, and they would know the subject matter that we're talking about, the visionary that's back over here. They would know it's part of my audience as well, too, that I have a brand, blah, blah. They figure all that out. So literally within, um, it's in it's less than a second, Facebook can identify what's in the video in very, very, very creepy ways to suggest it who's going to like this video. Not just like, but like consume it. So if you run these videos for a dollar a day to your warm audience, literally what you will see is a little bit of ad spend, but you'll be like, that was an eight minute episode that people are listening to and watching for 20 cents. And Facebook will literally run that video at the right time, at the right place to the right person, directly strategically to them. And it's not retargeting by now, by now. It's more content, they get to know you, they get to know you so. When you have a product launch or your next product offer, you only retarget in this warm market because these are the people that love you and been watching all your content. That's it. It's pretty simple. It's so damn cool. <laughs> so damn cool. All right. So we'll be using this video as a case study. <laughs> and using please, please share your results. It's my favorite part. Of course. And we'll give you credit too. Hey, hey. Yes. <laughs> of course. Uh, all right. Yeah. All right. So, so basically, um, I just want to kind of recap and then you can sort of tell me where I'm wrong. Um, so we're basically running... Uh, like short videos to our top of funnel audience, which is kind of like cold targets, um, you know, lookalike audiences. Um, you know, if you gave us access to one of your pixels or something like that, where that's our top of the funnel, people who aren't really familiar with us, we're going to run little short videos to those audience. The people who watch those hey, quick, quick question. This is really important. Yep. Top of funnel. Do you expect to make any money top of funnel? No, no. Top of funnel is just the break even or maybe under. Yeah. It's gravy, right? Because these are penny views. Many people are like, I'm not getting leads though. But remember, people are spending four minutes with you for pennies. So don't worry. The sales will come later. It takes multiple contact points. You guys are in relationships. Like, yep. you know that it takes multiple dates. Like, yep. that's where we're at. So, just, yep. so, so think, you just want to make that clarification. And so then you're, you're creating another audience around people who, well, you're creating their hot seven audience. Um, but anybody who watched any of these videos that we just created and targeted with cold, they're going to filter down into your hot seven audience. Plus anybody who's viewed your website, anybody who's viewed your Instagram now, um, anybody who's engaged on your fan page, any way that they can conceivably engage with you. Uh, we are then retargeting those people with a little bit longer form video, right? Uh, so like you were saying seven, eight minutes. So at this point, it kind of doesn't matter. Uh -huh. It's basically like this. You're starting to build a relationship with your wife when you first start dating. And all that matters is communication. And it doesn't matter if it's a 20 minute phone call or sometimes just a text. So what you may have is maybe you didn't have the chance to run a video, but you just have the audio that maybe you can put to a little clip that's 15 seconds and you run it for a dollar a day and say, hey, we had a great episode with so-and-so. Here's a small little quick clip. So that's perfectly fine and that'll run and a lot more people see it because it's 15 seconds. But also if you have an eight minute clip or I have movies that are running for 60 minutes, you can also run that for a dollar a day and realize that Facebook will pull people through that funnel. 
So you just kind of think about it as in, don't think about it as in, how do I make as many short videos as possible middle funnel? Because it's like, do you really dumb down the way you talk to your kids and your significant other, right? You're not like, hey, hey, like one or two word answers that just doesn't help. Yeah. Building relationships, it's great to have that longer video in the middle. So it could be images, it could be longer video, could be shorter video. This is your time to build your relationship for a dollar a day, which will answer the question of, literally within 10 or 15 days, you'll look through all these dollar a day posts and you'll see, wow, these clicks are a lot better, or these clicks are cheaper than the rest. We're getting some leads from some of this. This is great. This is great to test top of funnel with one of the other lookalike audiences because you pre-qualified the content with all of your warmer audience. So either you're working with a guest like me with what their audience is, or your warm market is like, wow, that one interview that we did with John Smith, nobody knows who the guy is, but man, look at these stats. People are watching for a long time, they're clicking. Yeah. Let's go ahead and test this top of the funnel and you're already a content factory. Now it's just the way that you stack it. That's it. Yeah. And then That's so cool. and then bottom of funnel, is this are we gonna start putting offers in front of people who are bottom of funnel? They've watched large percentages of our middle of funnel videos, and this is when we finally get to the offers. So, so here's a perfect example. Help remind me of your offer. What's the offer that you all have? People listen to the podcast, what can they how can they do business with you? So the easiest thing is opt in for the cheat sheet. But after that, there's affiliate offers. There's our traffic course and a variety of other things. So for example, what would happen is this. So let's just say the traffic course, mm -hmm. right? So what's going to happen is you're going to have uh, your top of funnel, right? You're always going to run that. And then you have your middle of funnel. And hopefully top of funnel someday makes you money, which is great, right? You find the perfect funnel. But mm -hmm. you, have your, you have your middle of funnel. Now what happens, you're like, okay, I want to put up my traffic offer. So you're going to go ahead and you get your traffic offer and you're going to run that traffic offer to that hot seven audience, right? It's a brand new offer. Before you test a cold market, you are unequivocally going to test it in that warm market. Hmm. Now, what a lot of people do is they'll try testing their offers top of funnel. They'll also try top of, testing their offers mid funnel, which is great. But what they completely just fuck up on is what I've completely not talked about is the very bottom of the funnel that you've already alluded to. Mm -hmm. So what I look at it is this. Someone's going to be listening to one of your podcasts. You're going to mention something about traffic. And what they're going to do is they're going to click on a link or they're going to Google to find your traffic offer. Mm -hmm. Now they're going to go to that traffic offer. They're still in that hot seven audience. So they will still see all this other content that they have running. That's great. But now they're going to be in a very specific ad funnel. So I call it an ad funnel. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that ad funnel, that could be a bot or specifically, I'm going to talk about the traffic one, is when someone hits your page, I would put them in a 14-day funnel because you know that they hit that page. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to retarget based off of one day, mm -hmm. three days, seven days, 14 days, and I'm going to go up to about that 14. So what's going to happen is, is it's kind of like a funnel. So if you can't see this, I kind of have my hands in a funnel. Mm -hmm. So the very first day is like the bottom of the funnel. I'm going to show them like a testimonial. So they hit your traffic site and it's like, hey, I took traffic with these guys. It's amazing. Check this out. Great. Well, if they still don't buy by day three, I'm now going to turn on two more ads that are two different testimonials, right? And then maybe a carousel ad. So what people are seeing for 14 days, they're still seeing this hot seven. They're still seeing your podcast content. But now they're seeing a lot more ads on the right-hand side for your traffic course. Mm. They're seeing a lot more direct videos and testimonials about your traffic course. And after 14 days, I exclude those people. So if they've been to your site, I'll create like, a, like an audience for uh, after 15 days, 30 days, 45 days. Mm -hmm. And basically, I'll exclude people who are between 16 days and 45 days. Because once they go through that 14-day funnel and they see all the testimonials, they see the product proof and they still don't buy, no reason I should be running my ads to them any bit longer and then I exclude it. So you have a content funnel and an ad funnel. When they come to bottom of funnel, that's when the ad funnel really starts. Makes perfect sense. So you're, you're, you're basically using their engagement, however they're engaging. You know, if, if they just need a little bit more credibility, a little value, a little more hand holding, then cool. They could see all the other stuff, but if they're actually engaged, boom, throw them through that funnel for 14 days. Well, Bam. here's the thing that you said that's really important that a lot of people really miss. And this is going to be a mind gasm for some people. It is this. Um, big data from Facebook says clicks are a false indicator to buyers and click through rate has no relevance to brand awareness, purchase intent, 
or actual purchases made. So we are conditioned to think as marketers, if I get a higher click through rate, I will get lower cost per click and that will get us more buyers. Not true. Mm -hmm. That will give you more window shoppers, not buyers. People actually buy through exactly the process that we just talked about. But many people can't track, hey, I I didn't realize they watched these four videos and then went to my website. I just ran an ad, they didn't buy right away and it didn't work. So Kill it. this is what marketing supposed Don't to be done. Yeah. yeah. No, it's it's human interaction. We're going for engagement, it's trust, it's time in some a lot of cases, you know? And one, one last point, because I don't want to answer your question from the board. Go for it. Yeah. I, I have a PhD. My girlfriend hates when I say this. And it is a public high school diploma. So <laughs> I am not that smart of an individual. And what I realize is I have worked with or for uh, or around some of the world's greatest copywriters. And I am not a world's greatest copywriter. I can barely even spell copywriter. <laughs> but if I get you as a client to tell a story, we go into any of these other questions you have in the board because it goes into this. The algorithm will take care of everything else. So I don't have to worry about the weirdest hook. I don't have to worry when people are like, you should write copy like, and I'm like, no, no, no. just tell me a story for three to five minutes in this type of structure. The algorithm will figure out their brain science. There are people so much smarter that the old advertising techniques, they're not dying. They're being proved by science that they're not necessarily working. So all we have to do is this and Facebook will find the right people if we have it set up right. That's why I'm so passionate about this business. Love it. We just talked to Tom Breeze about YouTube and he said the same we exact thing. He's so cool. Him and John uh-huh. Belcher both. They're just like, feed the pixel, feed love the pixel. John it doesn't <laughs> matter if it's Facebook. John, yeah. John Belcher stayed in this very room just a couple of weeks ago for those people who are watching <laughs> in the video. I bribed him to say, I am out of town. You should stay at my place so we can do more business together because I like you. He is a great person. You had to bribe him for that? I mean, that's like, a <laughs> no, John is bribing. But so, here, so here's the deal. You guys, and you guys know this because you kind of went through this. I'm going to say this is a side story. We don't mind. Like, yeah. I can be a fun, entertaining experience. So what happens is this is I'm out of town and I'm like, John, here's what happens. You're going to pull into this luxury. It's called a luxury place, whatever. You're going to pull in. You're going to walk to the front desk. And you guys know this. You're going to walk to the front desk and you're going to be, hey, I'm here for resident of the month, Kurt Molly. They're going to hand you a special golden key. You're going to go up to a specific floor, a specific door. You're going to swipe that. The entire room will be open for you that overlooks the city. Your bed will be set up to the side. You'll have some snacks that are set on the table. My girlfriend left a little welcome note. So the whole point is, is to have an amazing experience so we can sit down and talk about how we can do some business together and make like, wasn't that fun? That's so cool. That's so, and the part you left out is that the the door guy or the guy at the desk was just gonna shake his head and he's like, "Fucking, fucking Kurt, (laughs) resident of the month again." (laughs) Two years standing. (laughs) By the way, by the way, I just had five people show up for my event tomorrow. They're friends of mine I've known for a while. They walk in the front door literally an hour ago to drop off their bags so I could be on the interview. And I'm like, all you gotta do is just tell them I'm resident of the month. And they're like, Kurt, why does the guy shake his head when I say that? And I'm like, oh, every day this week, people are like, hey, looking for resident of the month. <laughs> Branding, keeps, right? So keeps the guy be- on his toes down there, huh? That is awesome. <laughs> cool. All right. So, um, so we talked about the hot seven, and I know you also said that you also will create hot four, uh, hot seven, hot fourteen, hot thirty. 30. Yeah. When, in what scenarios would you use these different, um, you know, Great length question. of Great audiences? Question. So essentially, what ends up happening is this: I created something originally. This is actually in our training course we've talked about for a while. You can only get it in my training course. Don't you love it when guests yeah. say that? You're like, you can only get it here. <laughs> no, it's not yeah. why you're here. Right. Yeah. Um, so what I did is, is I created something called the step two warm audience. So you may hear me say that, and that is a 90 day audience. That is the biggest audience. Now I base 90 days off of because if you target someone who likes Tony Robbins, Facebook is going after relevance within the last 90 days, typically give or take from what I understand. Mm-hmm. Good email cleanup happens after 90 days. So what I thought was, well, let's retarget these video views, website landings and stuff like that for 90 days for content. What happens is if you start running some more than 50 or hundred dollars a day top of funnel, that 90 day funnel of all these video views ends up being pretty big. Hmm. Now the problem is, is if you're spending a dollar a day on 15 posts, it's kind of like you're fishing maybe in this kind of little hole right over here. If you can see a TV that's a little interesting, but it's kind of like you're fishing in a hole right over here, right? <laughs> and not this big ocean. Right. 
So what I really decided to do is I'm like, okay, okay, let me think about this for a second. If I can't retarget everyone, well, I have to make the audience smaller. So what happens is, is I encourage people to do a hot seven because mm -hmm. once people are in your spotter web and you're advertising on a regular basis, right? What happens is you never turn off the hot seven and every seven days or 10 days, someone's going to see a new ad. And as long as they're watching or engaging, they're going to be able to see that. Well, what may happen is you may say, well, I, I noticed that there's a high frequency. I noticed that people are seeing that these 10 videos, they're seeing them on average three or four times in a month. So I got to, I, I, so they're seeing it too much. So now what I got to do is I should just increase the size of that pool. Mm -hmm. So if I create a hot seven, that's for seven days. And you may say, Hey, I'm going to keep my ad spend low and I'm going to run ad spend. And then you may say, you know what? I'm going to turn this on to a hot 30. The reason is because I want to increase that pool. I, because I'm getting ready to launch my new traffic product in 30 days. And I want to really start warming up that bigger pool. Because as soon as I turn on ads, it's going to be to that hot 30. I don't want anybody falling outside of that seven. So that's why I adjust the sizes. And I like going with that smaller size and I work up. 90 is the ultimate biggest. So I would do 30 days. That's where I target my new offer. If that works, I then go to the people for 90 days, right? And then I'll target them. And then that helps me prove and test out before I go top of the funnel cold market. And then that's where I start seeing that one-to-one -one relationship because the offer has been tested. Hmm. Got it. Is okay. Good questions. Yeah. yeah. And so I'd imagine what frequency goes down with a higher pool, right? And so you get, you, or are you adding more? Let's see here. I'm just trying to think here. Are you going to love this? Yeah. Hit me. Hit me. Maybe you'll help me out. See, what, most, what most people do is when they set up their retargeting, they'll set it up for like five days, $5 a day that says buy now. Right. And what will happen is you'll see this ad on the right hand side, the middle buy now, you see this kind of sitting all over. Well, what happens is it gets multiple frequencies. And what ends up happening is it's something that's scientifically known as ad blindness. Right. Ad blindness is basically you just see it over and over, now you just completely ignore it. Maybe people will see that on the last couple of days of ads inside of your sales funnel when they're like day number 14, if they haven't bought, maybe they should see your ad 20, it's fine. But what happens is imagine if you have 20 videos running in your hot seven and they're all running for a dollar a day, heck, $2 a day, you'll see that each video is probably seen 1.3 times or 1.2 times. So no one's seen that video twice, no one. But mm -hmm. if you look all the way on down for all 20 videos, it'll say the frequency is 4.8. So wait a minute. Facebook has figured out in the last 30 days how to make sure one of these pieces of content people have seen on average four times, but they haven't seen one piece of content multiple God, times. That, makes, that makes more sense now. Cool. Love it. I'm Love doing it. for people who can't see. Yeah. <laughs> no, people are going to see it. We're going to put this on Facebook. Guaranteed. <laughs> all right. So where are we going from here? Uh, anything else on that topic? All the hot stuff. Okay. I, yeah. I have a question. So hot seven. Is there... Um, is there a sort of maximum amount of ads you can run to the hot seven? I know we talked about this a little bit when we were hanging out in Austin and I always had this sort of theory that, you know, if you have a hundred ads inside of your hot seven, then, you know, none of them are going to get as much reach as you want. Um, so is, th is there like a maximum amount of ads you can have in the hot seven? Is there like sort of an ideal number of videos that you're targeting with the hot seven with the dollar day ads? So I am, I am really pushing this as much as I pos uh, as much as I possibly can. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is I'm constantly fascinated by the power of a dollar mm -hmm. and it's not to be cheap, but it's like Facebook knows the exact person at the exact time to target the exact way. Mm -hmm. So what I've been doing is I've been, I've been finding some clients where they just have a bunch of content, a bunch of content. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, okay, let's try 10, let's try 10 posts. See how that works. Well, I'm seeing on average that these are seeing, you know, seeing, being seen about 1.5 times on average. Mm -hmm. Well, let's just add some more posts. Well, now all of a sudden I have one client, for example, probably spend almost $2,000 this month in their hot seven because they have 27 different posts that's running, but they have a larger audience. Mm -hmm. But we're seeing website clicks because of their content go back to their site for three or four cents. So wow. I'm like, well, your next big push promotion comes up in three weeks. Heck, I'm just going to run 40 different of these articles. And as long as that relevancy set, you know, as long as two things, 
the frequency of all of them adds up to be less than, it could be four or five, heck, it could be higher. But as long as not one post is seen multiple times, right? They're only seen just mm -hmm. once. Right. And the second most important thing is when I look at the ad to make sure they're still relevant. So as long as everyone's seeing them once, and at the bottom, it could even say frequency of 30. If I click onto the ad level, as long as it says my relevant score is above six, I'm going to let it go and I'm going to add some more. Mm. That's it. Now, this might be a dumb question. Dollar to $2. What's the big difference if you raised it to $2 a day? I know it seems like for a dollar a day, you're just basically bidding the lowest you could possibly do so Facebook can work its magic in this whole thing, right? So is there any benefit to up in the budget? I know you mentioned two bucks. Yeah, hundred percent. So it's, what's really interesting is we have this, uh, we have this client that we're working with right now. So, um, yeah, I think basically I, I talk about this publicly, like this is one of my favorite type of clients. So this is a client who is a doctor who ended up having a thyroid condition and it's known as Hashimoto's. She went on this discovery to figure out what it was to find out that it was Hashimoto's. There's a lot of people who have chronic illness that don't realize they have Hashimoto's and it takes a lot of other doctors to kind of try to figure it out. So people consume their content at a huge rate. She did her self-published book and became the first New York Times best-selling author of a self-published book to hit the that's, New York Times list. Yeah, insane. like no big huge promotions. <laughs> you guys know how the book promotions work yep. because she's helping so many people. So now what happens is we start putting this stuff in the hot seven we're seeing some of this content being three or four cent clicks, like I said, back to the website. So I'm like, oh, wait a minute. I'm going to go ahead and keep on turning this up to $5 a day. Some of their stuff is $7 a day if it's less than five cents a click back to the site. God. So now it's like, okay, okay. I see all this is working so well. If the frequency gets too high, what do I do? Well, I just go ahead and turn the spigot on top of funnel. And what am I going to turn on top of funnel? All these ads that I've gotten now thousands of clicks on for under five cents, warm market. Obviously, these people love this type of content. Let's move that here. And then it just cascades all the way on over. That's what I'm looking for. Got it. So you're picking out, cherry picking those pieces of content, whoop, throw them on top, let them cascade down, kind of rinse and repeat. So I didn't catch sense. that you're actually so, running dollar a day ads at the top of the funnel also. So you're running dollar a day ads at both top and middle of funnel then. Well, see, what's interesting is there's the, my first client that I ever worked with in this space, he's a real estate investor here, and he says something that's brilliant. He says, pigs get fat, hogs get slaughtered, don't uh -huh. get greedy, right? So I always think about that, and I'm like, you know, if someone's going to buy my Facebook Live course for $47, I should be willing to spend at least three times that amount to be able to get someone in my funnel with my continuity and stuff like that. But if I can find, if I can find, so do I have to spend $47 a day for the next three days to see if it works? Uh, do I spend, what is it, 47, say 50? Do I spend 150 bucks in a day to see if it works? Or do I do what most Slack jaws do? Do I spend $5 a day for three days and after spending 15 bucks, realizing I didn't make any sales, wonder what happens? Or... What happens if I just set this up for $3 a day and watched it for a month and Facebook just optimized it, mm -hmm. right? What happens if I just stretched out that spend? Yeah. So as a greedy entrepreneur, I wanna spend more money to get my answers as fast as possible. But we all know in business, life, health, relationships, that is not always the answer. So what happens if I just put it at $3 a day? It doesn't sound a lot, but now I can literally test 10 different ad sets over the course of 10 days, see which one performs best and literally turn off ads that I only spent $15 on. Yeah, no, I love That's that. That's what I do with $3 and stuff. Yeah, because I mean, I, I think I think you're breaking a whole bunch of assumptions about Facebook that I previously had before this call. Yeah. Um, Good. <laughs> because, well, so I, you know, we have some dollar a day ads running. So, you know, we had, for example, we had Tucker Max on the show. And, Absolutely. Um, and I'm so hungry. Tucker is an audience on Facebook. I can target fans of Tucker Max on Facebook. Huge. So I'm running dollar a day ads to fans of Tucker Max. And I think we're getting about nine cent clicks on that. And I've, I've been afraid to jump that to $2 a day or $3 a day. Cause I just kind of assumed that if I boosted that budget, the magic that's getting me nine cents is the fact that it's a dollar a day ad. No, what I always do is I always bump 25 to 30% every three days and just realize every time that you adjust it, you know, the ads are going to go a little weird. Um, just kind of a whole philosophy here, but I'll be really quick on it. I don't believe anything that happens in 24 hours because it throws off the algorithm. 
So I look for a three day trend. I tell clients all the time for our agency, I will not produce you daily reports because I will manage more emotion than I will manage math and facts. Mm. So when I have a crappy day or I up the spend and I look at it for three or four days, I'm always looking at seven days, 14 days, 21 days, 30 days, because that's how Facebook attribution works. So if you bump it up, yeah, even if your cost triples, if you look at the last 30 days, it doesn't really matter. And if you keep on looking at it in that fashion, you'll make sure that you're not turning off your ads too early. Mm, makes a lot of sense. Which is probably where most people fail. They just quit too soon. Pull the plug. I know these Thanks. failure points, gentlemen. I have seen yeah. these a couple of times before. And I am <laughs> passionate couple- about this business to make sure people know where they are. Just a couple <laughs> times, huh? Um, oh, so I, I, I mean, th- we have a lot of places we could still go. Um, unfortunately, we do have time constraints. <laughs> oh, do we? I don't even know what time it is. Holy moly. This- <laughs> Damn it. All right, no, we're going to have to like have that. like multiple rounds. Yeah, I think we'll have to do a round two at some point. Um, but there I are a couple to. things we should dive into real quick. Um, like campaigns. So I've, I've been through a lot of the, the training in social media ad genius in the past, and you recommend people build like campaigns. Um I've never actually, I mean, every time I've run like campaigns, I've, it's very expensive. Like I've gotten three, four, five dollar likes and I didn't, I didn't see the value in that. And then when I've always targeted my uh, fans of our page, those are usually my least performing audiences for whatever reason. So I'm kind of curious about your take on like campaigns and what you do to make them work. So a couple of things here is uh, the first thing is people have a misconception that people buy on social proof. Big data shows from Facebook, people don't buy on social proof. So this whole crap of, hey, I require 10,000 fans on my page to get started and I'm gonna market in India is the worst way you can start on your page. (laughs) At the time of this recording, I have less than 2,000 people on my fan page. I am a Facebook advertiser. I've spent a ton of money on Facebook since I've been back on in October. Page likes don't really matter. Now, one of the things that I train that I had before is you know a lot of people let's be completely honest with ourselves really screw up the funnel process they don't know how to collect leads they turn on and off ads they really don't know how to run that Mm -hmm. what can happen is is you can acquire a like a lot cheaper many many times than you acquire a lead Mm -hmm. and in a previous time i would tell people look target people that has an opening statement that aligns with the belief system of who you want to target so for like learn to blog was it uh, do you love the blog comma like us question mark and what would happen is, is we would get people who would click on uh, click on the like for 30 or 40 cents. Mm-hmm. For 30 or 40 cents at that time, we would retarget those people and they were some of our cheapest opt-ins. But I had to get 30 cents first to get to that opt-in, but the math typically worked, typically. Right. But then you start to think about it and you're like, well, wait a minute, I'm targeting likes. Likes are targeted based off of someone who liked your page yesterday or two years ago. Mm-hmm. So depending on what you were selling two years ago or what happened to you or whatever, those people are still being marketed to. Right. So I'll market to the likes. I'll set up a warm market to get likes to the page, maybe at 2 or $3 a day. I don't do any cold market likes whatsoever. And what I've really found is, well, wait a minute. If I Can I retarget likes who I don't know if they joined yesterday or six months ago? Or can I retarget people who spent five minutes with me and it cost 10 cents? I'm gonna go with the 10 minute route, so I don't even really care about likes as much. Before it was an easier way to pre-qualify people, but now with video views, it's an easier way to pre-qualify people that Makes sense. I so the, the, the like campaign was essentially the precursor to what you're doing now. So be, mm. so kind of before this whole um, tofu, mofu, bofu sort of funnel, that was good. Of funnel, that was good. Bottom, uh, <laughs> middle of funnel, bottom of funnel. He's been we're practicing we're that. Uh, so, so before you kind of discovered this whole flow, the light campaign was essentially accomplishing the same thing, but this just accomplishes it at lower cost and more effective. Better consumption. Yeah, and I can control seven days, 30 days, 90 days, yeah, all that. Yeah. Mm, cool. Well, I think – shoot. We're going to take I, a picture of this board <laughs> and use it for round two. When we can pin you I have down. one small little point. I'll put this as a cliffhanger. Alrighty. It's, right now, right now, I'm working with people who design movies that help change the world. Not like a great action flick, but movies that help change the world. We talked about the people with addiction, people who are looking, people who are addicted to opioids, people who believe in certain different things that are really interesting. These are all really great documentaries. What happens is what we're finding is by people will literally watch a 60 minute movie right on their phone. Yep. Yeah, I think the video topic was the last topic I was going to say. Let's go down this rabbit hole. Let's do and that. And then save the rest of our questions when we can have a round two. Yeah. The main thing is I want people to think about it. It's, is, is shorter better? 
do you want to talk dumber to your future clients or would you rather do what we just did here is build a relationship for well over an hour and Facebook's math is going to allow you to do that. So you don't need the quickest, greatest hook. You just need to establish a good relationship. And the way that you do that is this way and Facebook yes. will figure out the rest. Yeah. And that was, so the big aha I know we had together is I was talking about a documentary idea that my wife and I are working on. Yeah. Old docu series launch. There's this massive thing. You know, you've seen all these other ones do it. You know, there's big name ones out there. Truth about cancer. Some other ones. I know but all those you, guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you worked with those guys, but then you you basically said you realized you could do that on Facebook. And after looking at all the data, the emails you're sending, the engagement going down each email, that Facebook is way cheaper, and you're going to be able to segment way better. Um, Here's it. Go for it. Yeah. Here's a mind candy for you. Why well, a director I sat with last night has done seven documentaries, sits around a table of a bunch of other Academy Award winners. Out of seven of them, he's the only one who doesn't have an Academy Award. All the Academy Award winners looked at him and said, how do you make money and make movies? How's that possible? Bam. So what we're doing right here is, yeah, it's revolutionary, and we're going to revolutionize the way that, that people consume and watch movies online. I love it, man. Yeah. And it's just so much more simple. Free movies. Was there anything, movies, yes. Joe, was there anything specific you wanted to go down on that vein? Because I know before we jumped on the call, you said that was like the one what? topic you were really excited to dive in on. That was the aha. And yeah. I just wanted to present that as like, hey, there's a reframing here that you can use Facebook. And this is what, straight from Kurt, is is instead of doing this long, blown out sequence of emails and maybe, you know, gating out part of the videos, you know, different episodes, if you've ever watched a docuseries, instead put the whole damn thing on Facebook and pay for traffic. I'm sure you'd use the hot seven type stuff for that as well. And then from there, based off of engagement, you can have Adam, you know, maybe there's offers, bonuses, other pieces of content you can give them and you're paying next to nothing compared to if you were to do this massive launch with it. Yeah. Pretty so many that. people waste so much money doing this. Yeah. And I think that, I just wanted to put that out there in this episode and give you credit for this like shift in, you know, I was just like, oh, okay, I've never heard of this. And the fact that you just validated that Academy Award winners also have no damn clue what they're doing. Um, you know, movie houses are watching this very intently. This is a very, very mm -hmm. moment in our history that is going to change in a massive way. Yeah. So there you go. Awesome. So, I mean, I'll yeah. just open this loop. So when we do have a second round, people are excited to, to hear it. But, you know, I, I wanted to get into things like um, driving traffic to webinars. Is there anything you do different around mm -hmm. webinars? I want to get into Facebook Lives. I wanted to get into oh, how do you run ads? Pressure. Mm -hmm. How do you run ads directly inside of Facebook Messenger? And what's the, the benefit of running favorite. Messenger ads? Um, <laughs> He's saying these are all the favorite things. That, damn I, it. Well, next shit. Time. Now, now we know. So <laughs> next, next time, time, this is why we need to do a round two, because this is all the stuff we yes, want to get into. <laughs> cool. No, yes, we'll sir. have more ideas, too. But thank you, man. Oh, where's, because um, your mini chat, your sequence was amazing. We both went through it. How can people check that out? Uh, one of the best ways is actually just go to my fan page, Social Media Ad Genius. Perfect. That's it. Media right ad genius goes to the fan page. It'll say message us. Click on the message and say, hey, what do you want to do? You walk on through it. That's it. That Pretty quick. Cool. Awesome. Yeah. And there's so much value in there. Anywhere else that you want people to go, check you out. Um, or they can always, the interesting thing is you always go watch our videos on our fan page because when you do that, essentially, you're obviously going to be retargeted. Yeah. Or the other place you are going to check out what we're doing is some of our other content is smag2.com. So smag to the number two, that is social media ad genius two. Dot com, see what we do. And obviously, if you hit the website, you're going to see some of our other content. So it's not like, hey, you have to opt in here. Hey, send me your email address. Yeah, just no, literally, you, and I will stalk you. Yeah, just <laughs> visit the sequence and you'll uh, you'll see all of this stuff in action. If you're listening to the audio, you got his eye real close to the well, screen. We'll, we'll, yeah, we'll link the video for sure. I think that's, <laughs> <there's> his, no, <laughs> that's I, his stock look. Yeah, I think that, we just found our show notes image. <laughs> that's even better i love it, there it is. Is. you can find it there you go yeah. that, that'll be like the little still image that we use on our facebook ad uh before you press Please. play on the video oh it's happening <laughs> <laughs> all right matt anything else are we good uh, no man we covered so much ground and we still have more ground to cover let's, so let's just wrap it up and then we'll uh we'll do this again soon if kurt will allow us yes sir we would uh, Please. Love to do a round two. tell me if people listen and take action and then if it works, you can invite me back again. That'd be awesome. Now I got That's people banging on my door in a second. All right. Go awesome. for it, man. Appreciate you. Thank you. See y'all. You rock. See you. Bye. Thanks, guys. Bye. Thank you.
<laughs> All right. Thank you. And I hope you just enjoyed this episode you just listened to. Now, right now, before we sign off, I have a few things I would love for you to do. So the very first thing is to go find our guest on Facebook and tell them that you loved their episode with us. That's going to help them uh, just feel good about themselves, but also uh, it's going to spread the word a little bit more for us. So go find them on Facebook. Everybody's on Facebook and go say that you love their episode and maybe one cool thing that you learned there. The second thing is to go to iTunes and subscribe to our podcast. Just look up Hustle and Flow Chart and hit the subscribe button. And the very last thing, the third thing is to leave us a review on iTunes or wherever you're listening to this podcast and help us spread the word more. That's how more people are going to get uh, this awesome knowledge, this this cool podcast training, and a whole bunch of other cool free training that we give out at evergreenprofits.com. So that's about it. Go find them on Facebook. Go subscribe on iTunes and leave us a review. You would be amazing if you did that, but you're always amazing. So thanks for listening, and we'll catch you in the next episode.